guys, I am going to be doing a quick demo on spinning from fleece and locks with these insanely bright locks that I dyed up the other day. Um, I am teaching workshops at both New York Sheep and Wool this October on this topic and also at Michigan Fiber Festival in August of this year. Um, there, what I have here is some really amazing Polworth that I dyed up that I got from Lucky Cat Craft because she gets some really good stuff. Um, it's super, super soft and squishy. And then I have both some uh, Teeswater Lamb Locks from Looking Glass Wool um, in Lansing, Michigan. Uh, Christy is the shepherdess there, and this is amazing tea's water. I really love that I have such a great local source, and Christy's pretty awesome. Um, she also vends at both New York Sheep and Wool and at Michigan Fiber Festival, so um, I will be using these locks in both of those workshops from her farm. And then I also have some... Kid Mohair, I'm sorry, this is so insanely bright on the film. Um, this is some Kid Mohair from Stack Rock Ranch from Marilee Ford down in Sturgis, Michigan. So I do try to source things as locally as possible, and even though this um, Polworth is from, has been sourced uh, actually from New Zealand, uh, it's nice that I can support somebody who is really ethically bringing it in. Um, so I'm going to get started spinning. I'm going to do a little course spinning with it today. Uh, but, you know, if uh, if you wanted to just spin it all on its own, you certainly could. Uh, but you um, don't have to. You can also spin it around a core or um, you could auto wrap with it or something. And I'm just going to show a lot of those examples, I'm kind of showing you my leader right now, which is actually tied to my wire core from my periscope last week. Um, so I'm going to attempt to flip the camera again. And please don't laugh at me. I wish I could actually sit this way, but, um, you know, it's kind of hard to film things on your own. Oh, sorry, the periscope's late, too. My best friend stopped by very unexpectedly and wonderfully. So um, that's what happened there. Um, I need to flip my camera. There we go. Hi, guys. Um, I'm going to try to film it this way again. It seemed to work out last time, and I'll go ahead and have my hands off to the side. But um, I just think that a lot of the time you have these beautiful textures in a fleece and beautiful colors that you kind of lose in processing, especially with locks. And I think that, you know, tail spinning is wonderful, and that's something that I'm going to cover in this class. But it doesn't have to be a big boa yarn. You can also do a really nice little... Um, textural yarn that weaves beautifully and also um, will knit up really gorgeous and give you some nice texture. So, um, you know, I saw lock packs and a lot of felters buy them, but it's always really nice to hear what other people do um, because I like to spin them, but I've had people who do book arts buy them and do things like that. So it's kind of fun. To, to know how versatile they can be and how people find different uses for them. But this is what I like to do best with them if I'm not putting them in my Betty Bats. So this lock here, I've kind of opened it up a little bit. So I'm still going to get some of that texture, but it's also going to give me a really nice spin. Um, it's a good idea to have stuff prepared ahead of time, but I wanted to show you guys this beautiful pile. Um, I swear it's not actually this bright in person, but it's coming through on the camera really crazy bright. So I'm just allowing this to wrap around my core, and it's giving me lots of little wobbly, curly textures on the side, which is really awesome. And I'm going to spin a couple of these locks, and then I'm going to show you a little bit closer. So this is some of the kid mohair. Actually, it's nearly mohair, I'm sorry. I got a little bit of each, and I haven't actually dyed any of the kid mohair. So, it doesn't mean that you have to spin a super duper bulky yarn either. I've got, 
Come on, focus. The love, loveliness of the cell phone camera. Um, but you can see I've got little curly cues kind of coming off of there and um, just some really nice texture. But it's also a really um, even yarn, actually, even with all those little textures coming off of it. And it's kind of partially even looking like a cheater boucle, which makes me happy because I've been obsessing over boucle lately. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab some of the fleece. And it's just kind of fun because you can make a really interesting yarn that uh, has a lot of different kind of blends within or little striping effects or anything just by using different types of fleece and different types of blocks with each other because they're all going to give you a slightly different result. Um, my core right now, I'm using uh, punch needle embroidery thread. <laughs> it's kind of my go-to. My son's playing Yoshi and just got really excited that he got through the circle. It's a fear of that in the background. Um, but this is still giving me a little bit of texture, which I love texture. So um, I really want to highlight that in my yarns. Um, I've been spinning really fine stuff lately and plying it, which... Um, it's been more for, yeah, you're my son, for utilitarian purposes, but, um, you are, <laughs> um, but, you know, I just, I want to kind of shatter the myth that these yarns aren't usable because a lot of the time they kind of get a bad rap and I have been learning how to weave and have been incorporating um, these sorts of yarns into some of my projects. And I've really enjoyed knitting with them and making really usable um, projects with them, you know. And you could use this yarn alternating with a really traditional yarn, even maybe like an indie dyed yarn or something, and kind of highlight those textures. I really love how certain patterns that are coming out lately, too, have had um, a combination of yarns in them. I was just looking at a Stephen West pattern that I think it was a Stephen West pattern that had like a, a lace weight yarn combined with um, a, a crochet and the two yarns were so different, you know, um, or maybe it was sack weight. Um, but I just, I like that, that difference in them because they're making these beautiful garments that have a combination of types of yarns, which really opens the door for some unique hand spun to get used in some projects um, because they're kind of designed so you have a lot of customization. Um, I'm just really enjoying myself at this point, so that's the problem I start talking when I'm having fun doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out and show you guys kind of the difference between the two, or at least kind of pull the camera down and show you how my bobbin's looking so far. So I really don't have a ton of yarn in here. You're seeing my house mess in this process, but I don't have a ton of yarn in here, but it's very textural and fun. And um. I hope that this kind of opens the door to people to be brave to try a new class and a new technique and know that you can really use this yarn and it can really actually help you with your spinning skills in other ways because you're challenging yourself to do something different. So please check out my classes. Um, you can find them on the New York Sheep and Wool Festival website, which is sheepandwool.com. And you can also find my um, Michigan Fiber Festival classes on michiganfiberfestival.info. Um, and I hope to see some of you in class someday. I, I will be posting a short video on YouTube as well with this, or possibly just posting this. So if you didn't catch it on Periscope, I hope, or if you want to watch it again, um, I hope that you can join me there. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.